Well, hello, Run Elite. You're back for video number two of three. I'm glad to see you again. Now, in our first video, which you can watch here, we went through five of the best 15 running books that there are. Now we're moving on to the middle of the pack, and you're gonna learn some outstanding books that you absolutely have to read. Make sure that you're subscribed so you get part three as well. Let's jump into this right now. Let's go, baby! Now we're changing. We're not gonna talk about training here. This is a story. This is a fictional story, and it's the only one in the lineup here that is a fictional story, but it's so good. It's called Once a Runner by John Parker. Now, I read this book when I was in high school. I had the first edition, which was different. The cover was different. It was like a drawing of a dude with his shirt off and the track shorts holding a pair of shoes and his head down. And I read this thing, and it's a story about a man who's really putting in his life into running and he's going through a lot of pain. It talks about his relationships and some of the workouts that he does are quite epic. I won't spoil too much for you, but there's a series of workouts that he does where him and his mentor go to the track and he does a series of 400 meter intervals and he does 20 of them. And then his coach says to him, do 20 more. And he's dying basically and he does, a, he does 20 more at some crazy pace, like four minute pace. 60 seconds or something like that. And then he's done. And his mentor comes back and he says, now do it again. And he runs 60, 400 meters and he's just dead at the end. But the idea of putting your soul and your guts into your training and then seeing what happens, there's some beautiful images here where he's running in the rain to go see the love of his life and how he's feeling and his depression that he's working through and then how it all culminates at the end working against the odds going against the man and it's so cool you've really look i got goosebumps talking about this book you've got to read this book you could probably audiobook it as well but it's called once a runner from john parker now there is a sequel to that book that's not making it onto the list here I believe it's actually a trilogy. The second book is called Again to Carthage. It's the same characters. The story continues on. That does not make our list of top 15. Just read Once a Runner. You're going to love it. Next up on our list is an audiobook that you can see here. It's by Pam Reed and it's called The Extra Mile. Now this is a story, but it's a true story. It's a sort of biography of the running life of this amazing woman who during her prime was definitely 100% the greatest female ultra runner who's ever lived. Now you can learn so much from this. You're gonna be inspired by the stories about what she did. She was actually a flat out winner at the Badwater 100, 135 mile race. Uh, she beat all of the men and she was really at the top of the world. But the way that she trained, she was a small, petite, full-time working woman with kids, with a husband, a full life. And the way that she squeezed in running many hundreds of miles a week is pretty impressive. And just seeing that if she can do it, I can do it. And she did it at such a high level, I think you're gonna find a lot of inspiration there. Pam Reed is an icon. She's still running to this day. She's still racing these amazing races. She's a lot older now, so she's not winning anymore. But she's she had a career of like multiple decades where she just was the greatest who had ever lived. Now, on to our next book. This one, I can't believe how lucky I was to find this. I found Michael Johnson's Slaying the Dragon. Now, if you look behind me here, there's Michael Johnson. Do you remember this guy? He was the guy at the 1996 Olympics who wore gold shoes. And you can see on the back of his book, he's got a picture of himself wearing those gold shoes. You might remember him at the Atlanta Olympics because he won and set a world record in the 200 meter and in the 400 meter, and then he came back and he did the relays, the four by one and the four by four. He came back at the Sydney Olympics and essentially did it again. But there's a transformation that happened with Michael Johnson. I've never met anybody who has read this book. I seem to be like the only one. I found it in a bargain bin at some bookstore over 20 years ago. And it was like a few bucks and I got it and I just was blown away because he talks about what it takes to make the shift from where he was at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. And he was, let's see if we can get a picture or two. Okay, he takes you through a story of the Barcelona Olympics in 1992, where he was sure as heck pretty good. I mean, he's an Olympian, but he failed to win and he failed to set a world record and he failed to impress himself. 
and he knew that he was at the top of the world, but he still wasn't where he knew he could be. And so he made a shift within himself and he makes a really beautiful analogy to studying math in college. And then he tells you how he got from there to becoming this guy, the guy that we know and love, the guy who won wearing gold shoes, Olympic gold medals, world records again and again, how he made the shift from being pretty good to the absolute best who had ever lived. And his world records stood for such a long time. They were only, they were broken, I don't know, more than 10 years later by the guy who he coached, Jeremy Warner. So I highly recommend slaying the dragon. Now let's move on to, we're getting even better, right? As the books go, these are more and more recommended. They're more impactful. So another tie that we have here between Jerry Lindgren's book on running and Bob Schul's In the Long Run. Now these books, they're impossible to get, but I can actually tell you how you might be able to get a copy. Let me tell you about them though. Jerry Lindgren's book on running, it's a self-published book. It's formatted like kind of weird, but this guy in the 60s and in the 70s, he was such a badass. He came from nothing. He was a sucky athlete, a sucky runner. He was the worst. But when he was on his high school cross country team, he found that literally in practice, he would be getting, he was so short and petite, he'd be getting elbowed in the face. So he started running away from everybody in order to just not get beat up. But then this puny wimpy kid would be way out in front and the other kids would chase him down to try to beat him and they would beat him. Jerry Lingren would get his butt kicked, but his coach said to him, Jerry, you have a very important role. You can do something that nobody else can. By running out front, you inspire everybody else to catch you. So Jerry started running for more than himself. He started running to inspire and string along his partners, but he got so good that he would go out like a bat out of hell. And most of his races, he went out at faster than world record pace. And then he would fade sometimes, but sometimes he actually got a world record, but he was the ultimate rabbit. This guy was a badass. He has beaten Steve Prefontaine many times. You probably know who Prefontaine is. Now this guy raced with him during the same years. They went to college together at different schools, but they raced each other and he beat him a number of times. You can learn so much from this guy. Now, how do you get a copy? You actually have to write to Jerry Lindgren. He lives in Hawaii and he sent me a copy of his book. He wrote it to me. And you can find this if you look online, I think on letsrun.com or something, you can find his address or you can DM me and I can see if he'll let me send his address to you. But you can get a copy, it's like 15, 20 bucks. He'll send you a signed copy, it's amazing. So sorry, Jerry Lindgren, if I'm blowing up your, um, your mail that you're gonna get, but I think he likes to get this out there. Now, it's tied with Bob Shule's book in the long run. Now, Bob Shule is the only American man to ever win the 5,000 meters at the Olympics. And here he is in Tokyo, not the last Tokyo, but back in the 60s, at the Tokyo Olympics. And this story is incredible because his coach at the time, Mihlia, did I say it right? Mihle Igloy, that's his coach. His coach had, at the same time, he had the world record holder in the 1,000 meters, the 1500, the mile, the 3000, the steeplechase, the 5000, the 10,000, all of those runners coached by the same man. Now, Bob Shule turned out to be Olympic gold medalist, coached by this man, but nobody knew how E. Gloy structured his training. He was very secretive, and this was before social media and people were posting all over the internet. He actually trained his athletes uh, around the, the infield and the outfield of a cinder track, so they didn't even run on the track. And he would train them, behind like a, a barricade. It was like at a military compound and people weren't allowed in to witness the training. So it was all a secret, but Bob Shul wrote about how they trained and it's quite incredible. It's so much different than you've ever heard of before uh, for high level training and running. I talk about it in my book as well, but if you wanna learn the most in depth, you got to get this book. I'm lucky enough to have written to Bob Shul and had him send me a signed copy as well. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, Bob Shul is, he's still alive, but he's um, essentially in incapacitated. He will not be sending out books probably ever again, but you may be able to find a copy of this if you search online. It's totally worth the read. Hello again, this is Andrew Snow. I wanna thank you for getting to the end of this video. Now, there are five books that we already covered in video number one here. This has been video number two, and make sure that you're subscribed so you can get the top five running books, and that is coming on our next video. I'll see you on there in the next video. Take care.